Hi, I'm Gordon from Camera Labs, and in this video I'm reviewing the Fujifilm X-T100, an entry-level mirrorless camera aimed at beginners, social photographers, and vloggers. Highlights include a 24-megapixel APS-C sensor, a built-in viewfinder, and a screen that can angle up as well as sideways to face the subject. If you find my reviews useful, please do like, share, and subscribe as it really helps the channel grow. Thank you very much, and now, on with the video. The X-T100's body is styled like a mini DSLR with a flat front and supplied with a small booster grip that screws in to give you more to hold on to. It definitely helps, but your pinky finger will still be left dangling off the bottom. Fujifilm's been generous with the dials though for an entry-level model, equipping the X-T100 with four dials including the main shooting mode dial. There's two control dials on the right side with the vertically mounted thumb wheel being clickable too, while the larger dial on the upper left side is customizable. I personally found the two control dials on the right side weren't actually that easy to adjust or that comfortable to use, especially when trying to hold the X-T100 in one hand, and the joypad buttons on the rear panel were also a bit too flush for my liking, but this is all down to personal preference, so your mileage may vary. I did however like having the customizable dial on the left side, as well as a custom function button by the mode dial. Behind a flap on the grip side you'll find micro HDMI and USB ports, the latter also used to charge the camera's battery. Fujifilm reckons under CP conditions it's good for around 430 shots, and I personally managed to record 2 hours and about 15 minutes of 1080 50p video on a single charge, spread across 5 consecutive clips without any overheating issues. On the left hand side is a 2.5mm jack for a cabled remote accessory or an external microphone. Since most external microphones use 3.5mm plugs though, you'll need some kind of adapter, but I successfully used one that only cost me a few pounds with a Rode microphone that's slotted onto the hot shoe, and you'll hear that combination in action later in this video. If you're more interested in flashes, you can mount one on the hot shoe, or use the pop-up flash for basic fills. Like most Fujifilm cameras, the rear 3-inch screen can angle upwards by 90 degrees or down by about 45 degrees, but with a new mechanism it can also flip out sideways to face the subject, making it ideal for selfies or vlogging. This side flip won't help you compose photos at high or low angles when you're shooting in the portrait orientation, but it does satisfy most screen positions in a fast and discreet single motion. The screen is also touch sensitive, allowing you to tap to reposition the focusing area, swipe up, down, left or right to access custom functions, as well as swiping through playback and double tapping to magnify. The gesture controls can take a bit of getting used to, but tapping to reposition the AF area is genuinely useful when there's no AF joystick, and you can also tap to pull focus during video, and I'll show you that in just a moment. The built-in electronic viewfinder employs an OLED panel with 2360K dots and 0.62 times magnification. That's the same specification as some higher-end models in Fujifilm's range, but when I compared it side-by-side -side with the X-E3, I felt the X-T100 viewfinder looked a little less crisp. Now this may be down to the live feed from their different sensors, as well as the font or rendering style used for the menu, text and shooting information. Whatever the reason though, having a built-in viewfinder remains a key benefit the X-T100 has over budget models like the X-A5. It's incredibly useful for shooting and reviewing both photos and video in bright conditions, and I love that the exposure details rotate to remain upright when shooting in the portrait orientation. The X-T100 has a mount that lets it use any of the X-series lenses, and is typically sold in a kit with the new X-C 15-45mm zoom, which has optical stabilisation and a motorised power zoom. The power zoom lets you make smooth adjustments while filming, and here's how the coverage looks going from 15 to 45mm when filming in 1080-50p. At the heart of the X-T100 is a 24-megapixel APS-C sensor that reduces the field of view of all lenses by 1.5 times, so that 15-45mm to kit zoom becomes equivalent to around 23-68mm. to Now here's a selection of images I took with the X-T100 and the 15-45mm to kit zoom, and you can access the original files in my review at cameralabs.com. If you're familiar with other Fujifilm cameras, you'll recognise their bright colours and crisp details, but it's important to note the X-T100 does not use one of the proprietary X-Trans sensors of the higher-end Fujifilm bodies. Instead, like the X-A5 and X-F10 Compact, the X-T100 employs a CMOS sensor with a more traditional Bayer colour filter array, like much of the competition. 
I wondered how this would compare to Fujifilm cameras equipped with the higher end 24 megapixel X-Trans 3 sensor, but I actually found their style to be very similar. Interestingly, Fujifilm has boosted the sharpness and contrast a little by default on the X-T100, so its images look punchier than those from X-Trans 3 bodies out of camera, but on the whole I find them very satisfying and again surprisingly close in quality. As an example, here's a scene I took with the X-T100 on the left and the X-E3 on the right, moments apart using the same lens with exactly the same exposure. Both have 24 megapixel APS-C sensors, but the X-T100 on the left uses a Bayer filter array, that's the traditional colour filter array, while the X-E3 on the right has Fujifilm's proprietary X-Trans3 colour filter array. When you look at them though, both share a very similar style, and when you zoom into 100% for a pixel peep, you can see the high contrast and sharpening applied to the X-T100 on the left, but is one image decisively better than the other? I'd say not in this example. Here's another example of both cameras, this time at a high sensitivity, and again there's little to choose between them other than the higher contrast and sharpening by default on the X-T100 on the left hand side. You can see a comparison between all the ISO values in my review at cameralabs.com. Like all Fujifilm cameras, the actual image processing style is applied using a series of film simulations, which attempt to mimic classic Fujifilm stock. By default, the X-T100 lets you directly access the 11 film simulations that are available via the custom dial on the upper left side, while previewing their impact on the scene, live. Here's how a selection look on the same scene. As always, Provia is the standard profile, and good for general purpose use. Velvia is the highly saturated option, great for landscapes or really punching those colours out. Classic Chrome applies a more muted, vintage look, and there's also a selection of monochrome modes with various colour filter options. There's more besides, but the high contrast monochrome Acros option remains exclusive to the higher end X-Trans 3 bodies, while the most recent Eterna profile remains exclusive to the X-H1 only, at least at the time I made this video. If you prefer effects, the X-T100 also offers a selection of advanced filters, including the usual toy camera and miniature options. Moving on to video, the X-T100 can capture 1080p at 24, 50 or 60p, but interestingly not at 25 or 30p. You're looking at a 1080 50p clip here, handheld with the X-C 15 to 45mm zoom. You can film for clips lasting up to 30 minutes each, and again as I mentioned earlier, I managed just over 4 of them on a single charge with no overheating issues. There's also a 4K movie mode, but only at a cheeky 15 frames per second, which as you can see in this clip isn't sufficient to capture smooth motion. You really need 24 frames per second or faster for that. So 4K on the X-T100 is really only applicable for some photo capture options, which I'll describe in a minute. In terms of normal video, it's best to think of the X-T100 as a 1080p camera only. To be fair though, 4K options on most cameras of this class are usually limited. Take Canon's EOS M50 for example with its rather severe crop. Only Panasonic can offer 4K with decent quality at this price point. If you prefer slow motion, you can also switch to the high speed movie mode which captures 720p video for playback up to 4 times slower than normal, as seen here. I mentioned earlier that there's a touch screen on the X-T100 and I'm using it in this clip to pull focus between near and far using the kit zoom at 45mm f5.6. Note there is a little hunting even when I'm careful to ensure the subject remains in the phase detect region of the sensor. When I move beyond it the performance looks to me pretty much unchanged so I reckon the X-T100 might be using contrast based AF only for movies here. There's also an interval timer that can generate a time-lapse movie at the end, in 4K at up to 30p if you like. I took 300 shots here at 1 second intervals. Ok, now it's time for a quick vlogging test with the X-T100, which could prove to be quite a popular choice for vloggers since it has a screen which can flip forward to face the subject, which is what I'm doing now. I'm filming this in 1080-50p, which is the best usable quality mode, there's also 1080-60p, 4K as you know, but only at 15 frames per second. I'll show you how that looks for vlogging in just a minute. I also have face detection enabled here, so hopefully the camera 
can refocus on me wherever I am. Now I should point out right now that I'm not using an ND filter so these are very motion unfriendly shutter speeds of two thousandth of a second so motion's not going to look very good but what you will notice already is the coverage is fairly wide. I'm using the XC 15 to 45 millimeter kit zoom, the new powered kit zoom and when it's at 15 millimeter or about 23 24 millimeter equivalent it's pretty wide so I'm holding this at my usual arm's length and it doesn't look too bad. The other thing to notice is that I'm using the standard Provia film simulation which I think has been tweaked on this camera a little bit to produce results that are a bit more contrasty and a bit sharper than on the X-Trans model. So I may not be looking completely natural at the moment, so I'm going to pause this clip and switch to another simulation. Okay, so I've switched from the standard Provia film simulation, that's the default colour profile, and I've chosen ProNeg Standard. This is the film simulation that is really designed for portrait work. It's a bit more subdued, the colour should be a bit calmer, Hopefully it's not too sharp, so maybe I look better, maybe I don't. At least you have a few of those to choose from, but I think that's what I'm going to stick with for the rest of these vlogging clips. The other thing I should mention is that I'm using the optical stabilisation that's built into this lens at the moment. There is optional digital stabilisation, and I'm going to show you how that looks right now. Okay, so now I've enabled the optional digital image stabilisation, so right now it should be using a combination of optical stabilisation in the lens, an electronic stabilization that's applied digitally. So let me know what you think of that. I'm going to switch it back to optical only because there's one other thing that I'm going to show you now. Well, there's a couple of other things. The first is that this camera may be popular for vloggers not just because it has a screen that faces forward, but also because, surprise, surprise, it also has a microphone input. Not just any microphone input, as you'll find out in just a moment. Okay, if you've been paying attention to this video so far, you'll know that the X-T100 has a microphone input. Well, not just any microphone input, it's a 2.5mm jack. That's more useful for remote cords, but you can adapt it for general microphone use. I've got a cable here that adapts it from 2.5mm to 3.5mm, and that's allowing me to connect my Rode VideoMic Pro, which you can hear the sound from right now. Hopefully that sounds an improvement on the internal microphones, which is what you've heard up until this point. I should also say that I have disabled the movie image stabilization, the digital stabilization. So right now you're just watching normal 1080 50p with the optical stabilization from the lens. And once again, audio captured from the Rode VideoMic Pro. There's a light breeze today, so you may hear some of that. Just turn away from the, uh, the wheelie bag there, because that could be a bit loud. But again, a good test to see whether this microphone is picking up much of the surrounding sound. Okay, there's just one more thing that I'm gonna show you while I'm on the streets of Brighton vlogging, and that is the 4K footage. So let's switch to that mode and see how that looks. Okay, we've now switched to the, uh, I guess it is the highest quality mode in terms of resolution anyway. I'm now filming in 4K with the X-T100. And if I keep completely still, it might look pretty good. But as soon as I start moving or moving my lips, you'll see that that motion is not as smooth as it should be. 15 frames per second just isn't enough for video. I think people worked that out a long time ago that really you need 24 frames per second or more to fool the human eye into thinking that it is actually seeing smooth motion. Um, now, I mean, Fujifilm aren't really trying to kid anyone with this mode. Uh, you know, it is best to describe the XE100 and the XA5 and the XF10, who all share the same sensor and movie capabilities, that the 4K really is, well, it's not really for video capture, is it? They do, however, deploy it for some 4K photo type modes, and that's fine because you're shooting 8 megapixel images at 15 frames per second. But for video, it's not very useful, is it? Right, that's enough vlogging. Now back to the rest of the review. Under the drive menu, you'll find two modes which exploit the 4K capture capabilities, 4K burst and multifocus image. In 4K burst mode, the X-T100 records one second of 4K video at 15 frames per second, thereby effectively capturing 15 images at 8 megapixel resolution. 
You can then go through them in playback and extract as many of the 15 frames as you like, as 8 megapixel JPEGs measuring 3240 by 2160 pixels each. In multi-focus image mode, the X-T100 racks focus from near to far while recording 4K video. During playback, you can then tap the screen to automatically choose the frame where that part was in focus, and so long as the camera identified it during the capture process, you can then extract it as an 8 megapixel JPEG. In practice, this works a lot like Panasonic's 4K post-focus mode, and there's also a chance to merge a range of distances into a single stacked image. In terms of autofocus, the X-T100 is equipped with a hybrid system, coupling a large square region of phase detect autofocus points with a contrast-based system making up the gaps. The specs actually look very similar to the X-Trans 3 models, but when shooting side-by-side -side with the X-T100 and X-E3 using the same lenses, I found the X-T100 felt slightly slower and less confident. In particular, the X-T100 at its top speed of 6 frames per second delivered fewer keepers in my cycling test than the X-E3, which itself falls behind the best focusing cameras out there. To be fair, I had no issues with the X-T100 or indeed any Fuji camera for day-to-day -day shooting and found the face detection fairly reliable too, but when it came to capturing fast sports or action, there are better choices out there, like the Sony A6000, and if you prefer more confident video autofocus, I find Canon's EOS M50 superior. Wrapping up, the X-T100 is equipped with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, the latter allowing it to embed GPS locations as you shoot. In the past, this is something that's never worked that well on Fujifilm cameras, but on these latest models with Bluetooth and with the updated smartphone app, it looks like the company has finally nailed it. So long as the app was running in the background on my phone and showing the camera was connected over Bluetooth, the X-T100 successfully embedded my location on photos as I moved around. Meanwhile, Wi-Fi lets you remote control the camera and wirelessly transfer photos to your phone. The Fujifilm X-T100 is a capable entry-level camera at a competitive price, which delivers good-looking images with a feature set that will suit beginners and more advanced photographers alike. That said, there are some key rivals to consider at this price point. If you shoot a lot of fast action, you'll find the Sony A6000 has better autofocus and burst shooting, although it lacks a microphone input and 4K video of any description. If you do want smooth 4K video at this price point, albeit again without a microphone input, then Panasonic's Lumix GX80 or GX85 is your best bet, and while it has a smaller and low resolution sensor and no phase detect autofocus, the sensor is stabilised within the body. Arguably the biggest competition though comes from Canon's EOS M50, which has a proper side hinge screen, more confident autofocus and easier wireless in addition to the APS-C sensor, viewfinder and microphone inputs. Indeed I'd say the M50 is a better camera overall, but again its 4K is compromised and sadly it doesn't enjoy anywhere near the selection of native lenses as the Fujifilm. Plus of course, you may simply prefer the aesthetic of the X-T100. The bottom line is the Fujifilm X-T100 sports the compelling combination of a 24 megapixel APS-C sensor, built-in viewfinder, screen that can face forward, and a microphone input. It delivers photos that are as good as the best models in its class, and can also turn its hand to vlogging, so long as it's in 1080p and you're happy to use a microphone adapter. So long as you don't shoot fast action or need smooth 4K video, the X-T100 is definitely a serious contender in the entry-level market. If you found this review useful, please like, share and be sure to subscribe to this channel. And if you really like it, you can support my work by checking prices or treating me to a coffee using the links below. If you're into photography without post-processing, check out my in-camera book, which tells the story behind 100 of my favourite travel photos, all JPEGs out of camera with no Photoshop or Lightroom. Again, there's links right below this video. Okay, that's the end of this video, so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.